Hello and welcome to the Z Hut. I'm Jay and today we're going to take a look at SDR radios, also known as software defined radios. Now in this series of videos, of course, we're going to look at SDR radios. But in this first video here, we're going to take a look at um, what I recommend you get because just ordering the radio, and then there's also a kit that comes with this little dinky antenna that's not even a foot long magnet mount. And then I see another one that has a pair of rabbit ear. Uh, if you remember back in the old days, the rabbit ears on the TV, there's another one that came with those. If you live in a really big city, um, you might pick up, you know, some stuff. Um, you might pick up some of the local ham radio traffic on the two meter bands. You're not really going to pick up any HF especially being in town with that short antenna. Unless the guy is right in your neighborhood, you're not going to hear, and you definitely ain't going to hear both sides of it. You'll be able to pick up your local uh, radio stations, and most likely you'll be able to pick up um, your weather, no weather radio, and uh, maybe like the fire department stuff. That's if they're still using the old analog. Um, in a later video, we will get to the, the trunkable systems, which is why you don't really hear uh, the police talking on your scanners anymore. They, uh, it's complicated, and we get into it, and it actually takes two of these SDR radios to do it properly. But that will be a further a future episode, probably five or six videos in. Um, like I said, this video we're going to take a look. I've got a whole pile of stuff in front of me. Now, I am uh, a licensed ham radio operator, so I just went ahead and bought just... The USB SDR dongle, and then I bought uh, it uses SMA um, <laughs> coax connector. So I bought a thing of adapters, and I'll be moving the camera into the bench here in a moment. I'll show you. That's all I needed, and it ended up um, it was like thirty some dollars, just a little less than forty. Now, uh, like I said, you're you're not gonna want that little dinky antenna that you get. I think it was six dollars more, and it came with that antenna. I would recommend. If you have the money for around $50, you can get it's Most people just call them scanner antennas, but most of those scanners and antennas are discount antennas. And for about $50, you can get one of them um, used, probably even cheaper. And you get that thing 20, I'd say at least a minute of 20 feet in the air. You're, you're going to pick up some good stuff. The higher you can get it, the better. Definitely better. Um, otherwise... Poss other possibilities, um, a CB antenna, if you've got that up, you know, like one of those car whips, but you do have to take into account you need a ground plane. Um, I will be getting uh, one of the future videos we will be doing is on using CB antennas with these and the ground plane issue. So if you're interested in that route, make sure you subscribe and keep watching. Um, I also, when I first got this, I have a two meter whip antenna that goes on my vehicle. And I put that on a little homemade uh, ground plane and stuck it. I only had it about 10 feet up in the air. Not the greatest. I it pulled in the weather, no weather radio, or no weather radio, very easily. But weather radio, it's not that far off from the two meter band, so that antenna worked great. I picked up my local repeater. Um, the biggest town from me here. I'd say it's about 40 miles. I didn't pick any ham radio stuff up off of there. But once again, the antenna wasn't very high in the air. All right, um, so also for the antennas, there are lots of simple antennas you can build. You've got your dipoles. Um, you've got basic verticals with a ground plane. Easy to build, real easy. Um, Let's see, you got your long wire. Long wire, if you actually live out in the country like I do, you can run a, a nice long wire. You're pretty much going to be able to pick anything and everything up uh, with that and maybe put up CB antenna. And also, you can plug this in. Another thing I did, one of the adapters I got, I'll show you. I plugged this into my TV antenna and I was picking stuff up. My TV antenna is about 30 feet up in the air. Um, yes, I still have the old. Over the air TV, don't watch it much. Normally, I watch Netflix, but um, I do have it in case of weather emergencies and the uh, I can't use my radios or something. I can still turn the TV on and get a weather report or 
But with that, that uh, pretty much covers the antennas. What we got left to go over here, we can pretty much come down here. Oh, one more thing though, and I'll forget the antennas. If you're using like, um, you're in an apartment building and you're a few floors up, you can use, and you're, you're not gonna have to run, you know, 40 feet of coax to get your antenna up in here. You can put it on your balcony. You can use the smaller, thin cable because you're only going to be running maybe 15 feet. Um, I wouldn't go much more than 15, maybe 20 with this cheap coax. And this here is actually um, our SMA where um, your SDR radios are just standard SMA. But also, again, I got an adapter and I got tons of this. The RSMA cable, that is more for your Wi-Fi. But I also, that's another thing we're going to go into. I've got some Wi-Fi antennas, beams, and some homemade ones um, that we're going to try in a further episode as well. But if you are on the ground like I am and you're going to be running 30, 40, 50, 100 feet of coax, oh, trust me, I've got, I've had runs that long. I've, I've got towers. Actually, uh, what most of us hams call it, I got an antenna farm. But you're going to want some of this. Um, 50 ohm. It's the thicker cable. See, you can see it's about the thickness of a pencil. This is what you're going to want if you're running any distance. Um, don't skip out, skimp on your coax. It does make a difference. The cheaper and junkier coax you use, the more dB loss you'll have, which is your gain, how good of a signal you can pull in. The cheaper you use, the less you're going to hear. Go with the good coax. The stuff lasts for years. Um, this one here I had in a closet. This was up on a tower for probably about six, seven years. And I took it down, used it. Um, I now use it for my experimental stuff. I've got a um, eight foot mini tower. And then it's got a 15 foot pole that comes out of that and it's on hinges. And in a future video when we start looking at these outdoor antennas, you're gonna see that. And this is the coax I use with that. This is around 50 feet. So it gives me more than enough to go from that to whatever radio I'm using. In this case, it's going to be the SDR. But all right. Um, actually, I don't think I really need to move the camera in to go over the last two items here. What I'll do is I'll put uh, a picture up here when we get into it. Um, before we get into the adapters, one big thing I recommend is a short, and I do mean short, USB extender. When we go and hook the antenna to this, and especially if we're using an adapter and we got our nice heavy gauge coax cable there, it's gonna be pulling on the USB port. So by having this short extender, which is not gonna interfere with the performance of this, um, I actually have a 15 foot USB cable extension and that is another thing in a future video. We'll probably take a look at that. There's a whole lot of things I want to go over with these. These fun little toy. But this allows you to be able to plug it in a computer and not have all that pressure from the coax on the USB port on the computer. I recommend that. This one here, I it looks to be a foot right on the money. Otherwise, you can also go where you have this plugged in. I've got a thin gauge, SMA to SMA, SMA male to SMA female. I haven't even opened it. I just ordered it just in case I needed it for some reason. What that does is it allows me to screw to this. It's real flexible and thin. And then I can hook my adapter, which we'll, we'll go over here in a moment, to that. And that, again, relieves the stress to the USB part. But most likely, I'm going to be using this. I was putting the order in. And I see, and this is just a couple dollars, and I figure, you know, if I don't use it for this, it, it's not going to get wasted. I, like I said, I'm a ham radio operator. I'm building all kinds of stuff. And you've seen my other videos. I do a lot of stuff with Arduinos and electronics. So, hey, make sure you subscribe. You want to learn how to program Arduinos, make cool stuff, make sure to subscribe. All right, last thing are the adapters. And what these do is it's an SMA plug on here. And um, I, it was a little kit, and the kit was like, I think it was $13 or something like that. And it's got adapters from SMA to all your standard. It has the SMA to your um, regular TV plug. 
your coax or your TV if you're here in the US. I also got the European version. It just came in the kit. Don't think I'll ever use it, but hey, I got it. I get a European antenna. I can hook it up. Um, this connector, oh God, I'm having a brain fart there. I can't think of the name of it on your ham radio HTs. It's the connector on there. I'm sorry for some reason. I can't think of the name of it at the moment. Um, then you got your standard connector, um, you know, for your CB antennas and stuff. If you ever played with those, that big coax connector on there, it's got an adapter for that to the SMA. Um, I forget what this one is. I'll show a picture of it. Actually, I'll put a link to it and in the description below, I'll put a list of what all connectors it had. But yeah, it's, it's got an SMA to SMA to uh, take and connect uh, two males together. It's got an SMA to um, RSMA, which is reverse polarity SMA. Like I said, that's your, uh, mostly for your like Wi-Fi cables, if you ever played with those antennas. And uh, that looks like about all that was in there. Hmm, that one actually looks broken. I didn't even notice that before. I'm going to have to complain. <laughs> I never even noticed the, um, hmm. I'm not even sure which one this is, but I'm going to have to complain. The end's busted off, and I've never used it. That's funny. Oh, well. Stuff happens. Yeah, the uh, connector for the SMA to the SMA. Oh, actually, I know why that's not in here. It's over there because I was using it yesterday. <laughs> My bad. But yeah, there's a broken one in there. I just noticed that. I'm going to have to complain. Um, actually, I got this off Amazon, not eBay. That's right. They're cheaper on eBay. I get lots of gift cards for Amazon for stuff I do. I just check out my channel you'll find the videos on there how to get free stuff from amazon i get 20 about 20 dollars a month every month and it takes a few minutes every month to do it so check that out other than that i think we can go ahead and wrap this up and like i said um well there should have been a picture while i was going through describing it if i forget look on the website i'll have um on there I'll have the picture. Maybe I'll just put it on the website. Go there and check it out. I'll have the information on this. Um, I'll have links where you can get these. Now I do recommend the, uh, the for the SDR radio. I think I forgot to mention yet. There is a lot of them. They're plastic and cheesy and they are actually cheaper than the $20. But uh, trust me as a ham radio operator, this is encased in aluminum. It's going to be better. Um, if you're a ham, you know what I'm talking about. You're not. Uh, that'd be a whole nother video to go through and explain all that to you. Let's just put it this way. It blocks out all the, the stuff you don't want coming in there to mess it up. So you, it works better. Best I can put it if you don't know anything about, um, about radio. So, all right, with that, like I said, check in the description below. You'll find the link to the website. I'll have uh, links on there where to get all this stuff. Um, also I'll have, um, a list of what all connectors are in this little adapter kit and whatnot and then uh, don't forget to subscribe like i said we're going to be doing i'm going to do a series it'll probably end up being about 15 videos and i'm going to go through and we're going to go look at long wires what all we can do we're going to look at uh like the cb antennas and vertical antennas dipoles double h bays beams all i mean i actually even going to do a video you can take a tape measure, an old busted tape measure, and cut up the tape measure elements and use some PVC pipe and make a Yagi antenna. That's You're going to receive really good with that. Now, it's band specific, but uh, it costs almost nothing to build. And um, they're fun, they, and they fold up too. You can throw it in a backpack. It folds up because it's made out of tape measure. So, all right. With that, I'm going to just wrap this up. I think I've rambled on long enough, so I would like to thank you for joining us here today at the Z Hut. I hope you have, uh, excuse me, I hope you have a great day. Remember to subscribe, click like, and remember, have fun building.